Hello, this is Steve McCarty, and I'm going to try a new method called Zoom casting, a tip that I got from a friend, uh, Dr. Ramesh Sharma in New Delhi, India. And today I will give a presentation for my bilingualism and Japanese society class entitled Bilingualism and Language Acquisition. So first I will show my screen. So welcome to uh, today's class. So language acquisition, Gengo Shu Toku. So uh, you can see that uh, that there was an important book called about bilingual education and bilingualism. And uh, when a Japanese uh, scholar translated it, then he translated it into, like, uh, instead of uh, bilingualism, then he translated it as uh, language acquisition or second language acquisition. And so it is not a mistake. And so, so there's a close relationship between bilingualism and language acquisition. So that yes, I have uh, thought about uh, what are some types of language acquisition. So the first is like a first language or a native language and we can call that L1, a person's first uh, language in that case. And then uh, moving to the uh, right then a second or a foreign language. So it can be called like L2 or SL is second language, FL is foreign language uh, learning. And so this is a kind of a deliberate, uh, deliberate learning that people have to study to gain a language. Then after around uh, you know, 12 or 13 years old, then it becomes uh, more an effort to uh, gain a language. And then uh, moving down to bottom left, then is a multilingual language acquisition. It just means like more than two languages and also learning or it, uh, it may be uh, the acquisition. So, so the difference between learning and acquisition, uh, according to uh, Stephen Krashen, is that uh, acquisition can be just a natural process like for babies, the way the babies can easily learn languages. But uh, so learning then takes uh, effort and so uh, learning is actually different. And so you don't actually like to teach a baby like a language, you know, but you just put them in the environment of that language and they just uh, absorb the language uh, naturally. So, so that is uh, acquisition the way I'm using it here. And then another interesting uh, last uh, type of language acquisition is, uh, well, bilingual acquisition. So it means learning or acquiring the two languages at the same time, and usually from uh, infancy, from the time of a baby. And so, uh, so we don't say L1 and L2 because, the, because they're both native languages. And so we would call like LA and LB or uh, BFLA means bilingual first language acquisition. So a little bit strange, you know, but uh, so I make it easy to understand by saying two native languages. And so many people don't realize that, that people can have two native languages. So for example, in international marriage like uh, ours, like where the mother like speaks one language to the baby and the father speaks the other, his own native language to the child. It shows your, your true like emotions uh, when you communicate with your child in your native language. And so the, for that reason, then I usually talk about bilingualism rather than multilingualism because it's a usual situation is uh, that can be easily you know, uh, raising a bilingual child is is for one parent uh, speaks one language, the other parent speaks the other language. So remember that it's possible to have two native languages. 
So here are some uh, well, books of, related to, to bilingualism. And often you see it's about uh, uh, raising a bilingual child is a most common uh, theme in this uh, field. And uh, it can be related to first language acquisition, like how babies uh, learn to, to uh, talk or to speak uh, more than one language. Okay, so bilingualism can mean uh, different things. And so some of the possible meanings are when bilingualism is an ism. So it means that it's an attitude or a stance that more languages are better. They're better to have two languages than one. And uh, bilingualism going down to the left is uh, like a state of being bilingual is bilingualism. Also uh, becoming bilingual is also uh, a bilingualism. And uh, so you don't have to worry about being 100% like a two native speakers. So that's not a realistic, not even necessary. So if you can use two languages like to a useful extent, then you can be called uh, bilingual. So then other meanings can be uh, bilingualism in applied linguistics, oyo gengo gaku, the study of languages in contact. And so here again, you know, when you think of like two different languages contacting each other, like in a, in a place or inside a person, then uh, usually it's uh, two languages uh, contacting. So again, I like to, to uh, focus on bilingualism. And uh, one more uh, meaning of uh, bilingualism is as a goal of, of education. So when you think of it, uh, no one says, you know, that uh, the goal of second language or foreign language education is a bilingualism. You know, and yet, uh, that's really what uh, the goal is. So the only thing is that the goal is not to be perfect and uh, not to be ideal, you know, but a realistic uh, goal. And so there can be a realistic goal of uh, education, of your learning on your own, or uh, raising uh, children, you know, naturally to become bilingual. And so here are some uh, books on bilingualism in, in Japanese that I have uh, used. And so again, the focus is usually on uh, either bilingual child raising or bilingual education. And uh, let's uh, be clear that that. Uh, that raising children to be bilingual is not a bilingual education. So education is in schools. And so the bilingual education means to teach in more than one language in, in schools. And I have developed a system of uh, levels of bilingualism. And uh, uh, we will focus on the four in the daily life. Uh, the, on the right side, the disciplinary level is uh, the professional a research level or studying bilingualism in university or a graduate school. Uh, but in daily life, then I like to have the students to focus on four levels of bilingualism, the individual level of the bilingual development. And so your development of your own you know, bilingualism uh, in yourself. And then uh, the family level, bilingual child raising. And the societal level means like the level of society where you have the more than one language in society. You know, for example, like Singapore maybe has the speakers of Chinese, English, and uh, uh, Indian languages, uh, like a Tamil. And uh, so you can analyze the bilingualism on the societal level. And then one more level is the school level, which is uh, bilingual education. So as I mentioned, uh, teaching into different uh, languages. In a little more uh, detail uh, today, so not too much about this, uh, but uh, uh, perhaps you can view this uh, online. Uh, but uh, so uh, more details, a taxonomy is like a classification, a like bunrui of uh, different uh, levels of uh, bilingualism. And so the, so at the individual level, then there can be like a childhood bilingual development where babies are acquiring 
the two languages uh, from birth. And then uh, for adults or for people after the teen teenage, and then it uh, is a consecutive uh, learning the one language first and then another language later. And so they're all different uh, uh, aspects of like individual uh, bilingualism. But at the family level, again, the, so the different ways to raise children to be uh, bilingual, you know, well, what languages do you use with uh, children, you know, at what times or places? And, and then uh, it's related to, say, international marriage, international families. And uh, biliteracy means like a learning to, to read uh, in two languages, which is not so easy. And then, uh, so I have uh, also lectured about uh, to this class, a language shift. It means like the, the languages that people use maybe change uh, over time. So when uh, so Charles Jenkins uh, went to uh, North Korea, then he started like speak, knowing like English and uh, Korean. And then uh, the, the Hitomi Soga was uh, abducted to North Korea and she started using uh, Korean and they had uh, children. And then later, then they went to Japan. And then uh, so their, their language use like started shifting like from, you know, to English to Korean, from uh, Korean to uh, uh, Japanese and, and so forth. And so the, the bilingualism is not always stable, or, but it can change over time at different levels, also societal level. And recently, say an African country you know, changes the official language from uh, French to English, for example. So the societal level, so the, the various uh, issues, especially around the government uh, policies. So the government may not clearly state, you know, but they have a, some kind of policy toward, you know, the language, other languages or speakers of other languages. So the different communities of languages in uh, society. And then the school level of uh, bilingualism. So there are various types of bilingualism. Some are weak and some are strong. So the usual kind of learning uh, languages in uh, junior high school or college, uh, starting a language is, is too late. And so usually that's a weak form. A strong form, you either like a teach like a half the curriculum or more in the in the second language of the student and so you, you may be teaching content and the language at the same time you know which is very efficient so this is related to uh, international schools or uh, uh, bilingual schools okay so that uh so i want to make this uh pretty quick today Oh, here we go. Uh, okay, sorry. So, so this is my first uh, attempt at uh, wh what uh, I'm calling uh, Zoom casting as a way to uh, do screen casting uh, and to perhaps easily make uh, a screen cast, you know, to show students or to make uh, presentations uh, at a distance. So today it was about uh, bilingualism and language acquisition. So I hope you enjoyed today's uh, presentation.